welcome to episode 5 of season 2. I brought up some stuff at the end of the last episode that I'm not sure a number of you actually made it that far through the video to see or to hear. So I'll cover it briefly again here at the minute. Um, you guys have asked, well there was a big thumbs up for uh, potentially selling Josh McGuinness in this upcoming January transfer window moving Barnett to the bench and buying in a higher rated, better, more reliable, more regular goal-scoring striker to try and get us out of the championship. Do let me know in the comment section if that is the major opinion, and if it is, I will look to make a signing and sell Josh McGuinness in the January transfer window to make a new striking signing. McGuinness is 31 now, 31 now, and probably not going to be... Uh, you know, heavily reliable moving forward. So I'm open to that idea. Also, the, the general feedback, and I agreed with this and I mentioned it in the last video as well, we've obviously got a number of young regens that we're using currently in this squad. And I am planning on doing a youth-only save series later in the FIFA year. So I agree with the, the comment that said... Uh, that we should maybe think about signing some real-life players in the remainder of this series rather than focusing entirely on the youth because then that would kind of nullify the whole point of doing a youth-only RTG. Otherwise, this would kind of morph into a youth-only RTG. So uh, when it comes to the defenders, I will only sign a youth defender if he's absolutely incredible. Like, late 60s. We'll only sign worldy defenders now via the youth system. We don't need any forward attacking players whatsoever. And if I get a goalkeeper that's incredible, I'll certainly sign a goalkeeper. But with regards to the defence, I'm probably going to look to buy players now in the defence or even just concentrate on the youngsters that we have, like McLaughlin and Greaves. So I think the squad at present is looking pretty solid with perhaps the one signing at striker to be made in the upcoming January transfer window. We do have some money available to us. I'm not going to sign uh, Adelican though. We have £14 million available to us. And Josh McGuinness is valued at... I hate that it does that. You sort and then it takes you to the bottom, which nullifies the whole point of sorting. Because either way, you have to scroll. Uh, McGuinness, well, his contract is expiring in eight months' time. So I'll have to renew that quickly. We'll delegate renewal... Well, I don't want to pay it. Well, I guess if he's going to move on, it doesn't matter. But uh, I'll negotiate it because I don't want to renegotiate his wages too high so that then any anyone that potentially signs him won't pay his wages. So I'm going to renegotiate McGuinness's wages here. Contract extension of a year. I will counter with two and hopefully they'll he'll sign that, which he will, just to make sure that it doesn't bug on me and only gives him eight months. Uh, and then we'll accept no release clause. And hopefully we can convince McGuinness to leave. Uh, I'll just offer him five grand a month. Five grand a month. Five grand a week. And they'll accept that. Right, so I'll transfer this McGuinness. I'll go through and uh, actually offer contracts to those that are only on eight months remaining. I meant to do that earlier in the season and forgot. So I'll get that done in today's episode so that over the course of the upcoming couple of episodes throughout December, which will be split into two, you guys will know exactly how much money we've got to spend to look for that new first team striker, if that's what the general consensus is uh, in the comment section. So today we've Bristol City to start. They're struggling down the bottom. We're literally just going to quick sim this and hopefully get three points to start us off well today. And we get a draw. As Andy Vyman actually has a goal disallowed. I presume that uh, goal, the ball symbol with the X means missed pen uh, rather than goal disallowed. Because I've never seen a goal disallowed on the thing before. I imagine it's a missed penalty. So Bristol City nearly uh, got uh, a win against this. We've had... Ah, great. Right, okay. So oh, George Heinemann is out for five months. That might change things as well. Uh, a one year oh, he, he rejected the opportunity to go to Ingolstadt didn't he I will delegate this and we'll look for just a short term loan as it would be in January so be only, only on loan till the end of the season right well that's George Honeyman out of contention for pretty much the rest of the season and that puts Wallace in I <laughs> well that's annoying um, Nielsen can play in central midfield He's not amazing, but does have decent stats. 
Maybe I change Nielsen to a centre mid. Andrew can play at Cam. Hmm. I could utilise Nielsen as a centre mid. What does it actually give him as a rating for centre mid? It actually, it's minus seven. And if I change it to centre mid, it's still minus seven. Okay, great. So Nielsen isn't going to be able to be utilised as a centre mid. Uh, finishing's okay. Long shots, uh, passing stats, not incredible. Right. So I'll put, I will put Andrew on the bench then. Okay, so that's frustrating. Wallace is going to come in. He's going to get a lot of first team football. Hopefully it means he can grow well, but maybe we're going to look to sign a or loan a midfielder as well. Ah, oh, balls. That throws the cat amongst the pigeons, doesn't it? Because it means I'm not going to be able to spend all of my money on a new striker. We might have to uh, split it. We'll see how Wallace does in that centre midfield role. If he's going to be good enough to hold down the fort for the rest of this season, then we'll quite simply allow him to do that and spend the money on a striker and then consider what we do in the transfer window at the end of the year or in the next summer without factoring in the need of a new midfielder because um, George Honeyman will be back from injury. But that that is going to significantly affect our season, missing George Honeyman for a considerable period of time. Uh, I'll think about it, Duncan. I highly doubt that you'll be getting a start, my man. Right. Actually, we do have a young centre mid we could call upon in the youth setup already as well. That being uh, Ewing, Logan Ewing, who has 85 to 91 potential. So perhaps I should give him. Yeah, he's definitely a, he's a better centre mid than. There you go. I'll promote him, and uh, he can be my centre mid on the bench because certainly he's. Going to be better than... Oh, Andrew's higher rated than than Barr. I don't know which which of these two wingers should I prioritise. the Andrew or Barr. Because one of them has to be on my bench. But I'm not sure which of them. It, although they both could be on the bench if we sell McGuinness. And then Scott would drop out of contention. And Barnett would take over in the starting... in the starting Or on the bench. And the new signing would take over in the starting lineup. Well, there's a lot of decisions to be made at the minute. With regards to what to do with the squad. And I genuinely not, I'm not sure which way to go. I'm going to go and attend this press conference just to try and boost our morale a little bit if we can. To get a little bit more from, um, a little bit more from the morale boosts that we could get. Uh, we've got an excellent squad as things stand. We'll deal with that honeymoon uh, situation. And I trust my squad to be able to step up and uh, deal with the lack of a first team favourite. Right, Middlesbrough away. Time to travel to uh, the Riverside. And hopefully get three points in our first played game of the day. We've got Aston Villa on the way next, which I expect to lose heavily. So getting points in the other games today is going to be pretty important. Stojanovic in goal for Middlesbrough. Tuba Akpom up top then with Ashley Fletcher, who's a youngster who used to be at West Ham, I think, in the uh, striking position alongside him. Saville, Makuena and uh, Hall in the midfield with five at the back. A number of five at the back formations with teams in the uh, championship so far this season. I'm not sure where Middlesbrough are in the league, but they're another side in the championship that have a uh, a real life stadium. So it's nice to play in more more real life stadiums lower down the uh, the divisions. And I guess the more teams that get promoted and then relegated again, that will just continue to be uh, an option for us here on FIFA. The more licensing there is, the more real life stadiums there are, the better considering we can't do anything with our own stadiums at the minute. But for now, we'll see what we can do here against Middlesbrough. I would love to go on a, on a run. I titled the episode Promotional Relegation for us this season. I haven't yet seen the feedback on that episode, so I don't yet know whether you guys think I'm going to get promoted or relegated. I'm hoping that we can, at some point, put in a run of games to send us towards the playoffs. And in the meantime, just kind of tick along whilst keeping ourselves relatively close to the playoffs so that when that winning run arrives it does get us higher up the table but we do need to pick up we need to pick up you know a kind of a four points minimum from every three games kind of a win a draw and a loss basically and that would help just keep us ticking over maybe five points from every three games if possible or two wins and a draw rather than or two wins and a defeat six or seven points rather than just straight back to back to back to back to back wins which should be the run that would see us push towards the playoffs i'm, I'm not sure how it's going to go this season and with that defeat to, or with that defeat with that loss of honeyman that could make things even more difficult for us 
But we'll wait and see how things go. There is the January transfer window to potentially change things if we need to. We started this season thinking we'll give the youngsters a go and see where they can get us. And it doesn't appear that at present they're able to get us much higher than mid-table on, you know, a fair amount of games worth of experience so far. So we'll, we'll play it by ear. We'll see how it goes. And fingers crossed, get ourselves the chance of a playoff finish later in the year. Housen dinked into George Saville. Out wide to Bowler. Is he going to cut back or is he going to keep going? Cut back is the answer. Saville. Nicely to Bowler. Cross could come in here. Does. Good delivery. Overhead kick from Tuberakpom. But why did the target? Would a more orthodox finish have given him a better chance of scoring a goal there? Probably with the time and space he had. He could even perhaps have tried to bring it down and then tuck it home. If he did it quickly. Mistake, you have to say, from the Middlesbrough front man there to go with the option that he did. But it's a mistake I'm glad he made. Doherty, oh, Pinto made a run, but it just kind of ran ran him straight into a defender. He's made a better run now. And in a position. Oh, to hit the inside the post and so very nearly give us a 1-0 lead. Wallace with good reactions to go and get to that. Ratings for that. Pinto could bring this down. Drops his shoulder well. I kind of went the wrong way there, though. And there wasn't really an option. Like, squeeze this to Barnett and get it quickly onto his left foot. We could have been in, but... Unfortunately, the defender steps in and gets it away from me. It could be 1-1. It could be 1-0 at either end, but so far, no goals. Doherty to Wilkes. Back there to Emmanuel. And inside to Wallace. Building up nicely enough. Pinto through the gap to Barnett. Oh, Pinto's arriving at pace. Takes it into his stride at pace, but can't find a teammate or a shot. An angle for a shot. Doherty spins well though. And he's got the angle for this shot and draws the save out of Stojanovic. And it'll remain nil-nil for now. It's the first shot on target from either side throughout this game. And Joshua Emanuel's header goes over the top of the bar, unfortunately. Well, we've been the side that's been the most creative so far. We still look like the more likely to take the lead in this one. Well up, Wilkes. Good header. Barnett squeeze it through to Wilkes again. Drop on the left side. Oh, he just we just can't shoot on target today. I'm not putting much power on these. I don't feel like I'm putting much power on these with the controller, but real lack of accuracy from our players today. That's a good header by Pinto. It will reach Barnet. Arriving here is Pinto. And through that gap is Doherty. Right now, please, surely, at last. The chances have been coming. We've stepped up our game in this second half. And finally, the pressure pays. We lead at the Riverside. And that has been coming. And it is a deserved advantage. 1-0 Hull. Three changes for me. Elder off. Pinto off. And... Uh, well, I can't actually remember what the other, say, the other change was. Ah, and uh, the, man in, the man in midfield. Alongside uh, Doherty. So Ewing is in now at centre mid. Christie at left back. And Scott up top with Barnett dropping to the cam position. So we'll see what we get in the remaining 10 minutes. Whether that's enough time for anyone to really have a, a good shot, crack of the whip. And a shot at maybe doing something. I'm not sure. There is some call for James Scott to get the chance at striker to try and prove his worth. And I'd be open to doing that if I knew I was going to get something from it. Oh, Charlie, come on. Puffs out his cheeks and he may well do. I could have maybe played that across to Scott with a through ball, taking the keeper out of the game. Then it would have just been a case of who's going to get there first, defender or attacker. But he's got some pace in him, Scott, and probably would have been favourite for that. That's annoying. If I could have taken a 2-0 lead there, I would have been game done and dusted. As it stands, it's still 1-0. Oh, it's good work from Scott. Can he finish it is the question from Derek Ray. The answer is no. Can Lewis Potter do so? Whoa. A great save by Stojanovic. Says no too. Ewing with the delivery. And Device heads wide again. Oh, poor finishing has cost us the chance of a big win here. But at least we've been solid enough defensively to ensure that we do get a win here. He says, as Middlesbrough have possession in the final few moments. Please, only one minute added on. It's four added on by the referee. It might well not yet be three points for us. Desperate to try and get the win. This could be a really good month for us. No! Oh, my God! Save of the century from George Long. I need to see that again. 
How? How has George Long kept that out? From point blank range, Chuba Akpom. He's just thrown himself out. It's almost as if he's just gambled on where it's going to go because he's not gone at him. Chuba Akpom heads that towards the corner. And George Long has somehow got an arm to it. Not once, but twice. Once to block the shot and twice to knock it clear so Akpom can't just turn it home. That is unbelievable goalkeeping from George Long. And Cyrus Christie with a great tackle. What an end to this game. I thought it was about to be absolute typical Chesnoid and we concede with the last chance of the game. We haven't. We will hold on and purely thanks to our wonderful goalkeeper. George Long, take a bow. We win 1-0 away at Riverside. Oh, and that is a huge victory. A huge victory. Up next... Runaway league leaders, Aston Villa. Main has agreed to go out on loan to Darmstadt. He didn't want to go to Ingolstadt. He's gone to another stat. It's Darmstadt, and that will go through in January. And Bayard's position change from right back to right wing back is now complete. I don't have any idea why. Uh, it's, it's saying it's going to take so long to change him to a to a centre-back when it's one of his positions. At least we've been able to up his overall, at least, by changing him to a right wing a right wing back. So he's 68 rated now, and he's still going to take forever to, uh, to change his rating. I guess, actually, whilst we were looking for uh, young defenders, when Cyrus Christie ages out in a couple of years' time, um, Bayal may well be able to pick up the slack as that rotation right back. Even though I initially would like to use him as a centre-back. But he's 68 rated currently. Gets a minus one. But I can change it to a right wing-back. And then at centre-back, he gets a minus five. So I'm not going to be able to use him as a wing-back at all, am I? I just mean a, a, a centre-back at all. Not unless I commit to changing him. I could commit to changing him to, uh, to a centre-back. It just wouldn't happen. Come on, let me change him to a right-back. It wouldn't happen for for two years I'll, I might as well do that because by the time he gets to by the time we get to the point where that is going to happen then his stats might well have grown a lot more anyway or do I commit to a development plan to try and improve his stats yet further let me know in the comment section train Bayard to be a centre back or like so he can play in that position in season four or five or Train him to be a, just a better right back. And I'd probably change him back to be outright right back rather than right wing back as well. Although I might knock his overall back down again. Oh, it's such a frustrating position to be in. With We're kind of in between being too good for the championship. And or we're in between having a first team 11 that's great for the level that we're at. And a squad that's great for the level that we're at. And at present, we don't have the squad that is great for the level that we're at. But that's only going to come either with time or with signings. And I'd like to show faith in the players that we've got, which is why I'm li kind of limiting the, the potential transfers in January to just a striker. But I may even, in the, in the meantime, give Scott a chance at striker to see if we can get some growth out of him. Barnett's up to 69 but maybe James Scott is the answer at striker. Maybe he's the one that we should give the starting spot to and he can get us goals. I'll have a look and see what I can do with him development plan wise or see what we are doing with him development plan wise. He's on mobile striker at the minute. He's got five star skills, 63 finishing. I should really improve his finishing stat and his, to be fair, his pace is probably good enough. So let's do that. We'll change him to a target. No, we'll change him to a complete striker. Up his weak foot. And then maybe, maybe James Scott is the ready-made McGinnis replacement that we thought Charles Barnett might be. I am lost at the minute with what to do with this team. And I need your guidance. Please tell me down below. So how familiar does this Aston Villa starting lineup look like? Granite Chaka in the midfield for them. Might not really be good enough for top end of the Premier League Granite Chaka, in my opinion. But... 
certainly going to be one of the best central midfielders in this division. Jack Grealish at Cam behind Ollie Watkins. There's still a number of... Uh, a number of their first team squad from the Premier League still playing here for Villa, which is probably why they are so much better than anyone else in this division. But that begs the question as to why they ended up getting relegated in the first place. Strange. Still, though, they have the best attack in the league, unsurprisingly, with the amount of wins they've been getting. And they are runaway league leaders so far. Back there to Burke. Into Wilkes again. To Doherty. And Pinto to Scott. James Scott. Oh, hello. Someone wants that striker role. And his name is James Scott. Lovely finish. We lead against Villa. Bertrand Traore. Driving down the line. That's great footwork and good speed of footwork as well. Mid shoot. Across here to Granite Chaka. Don't let him shoot on his left foot. Ollie Watkins. Don't let him get in behind. Thankfully, he's given it straight to Doherty. Grealish nearly won it back from him again. Oh, and Courtney Howes has won that off Malik Wilkes. Ollie Watkins, great footwork. No, Jack Grealish could have given it back to him. He could still go solo. He has done. George Long with a good save to deny Aston Villa an equaliser after 15 minutes. I have a funny feeling we might be on the back foot for the majority of this game. Bertrand Traore to deliver a whip towards the middle. Courtney Howes is up. Courtney Howes scores a very good-headed goal. They are level Aston Villa. And there was no way we were going to keep a clean sheet in this game, was there? Watkins. Back to Grant Chaka. So option wide left hasn't actually offered too much of an option there. Ah, oh, Courtney Howes pushing forward from left back. I'll have that, please. Thank you, Emmanuel. He's done well. Is that my throw? It's their throw. They're looking to get themselves in front for the first time, Aston Villa. Granite Chaka back to Howes. Trying to get it off him, but I'm just chasing shadows at the minute. In the shadows, Granite Chaka back to Meshula. Dinked out wide again. This is excellent footwork and football from Aston Villa. Vasilev, give me that back, please. Thank you, Doherty. Oh, but can't find a teammate. Ollie Watkins back to Chaka. Ending this first half on the back foot and under pressure. And Bertrand Triore will give Aston Villa a lead in stoppage time at the end of the first half. We trail the villains. And they're proving why they are where they are in the table. Greedish. Dinked out wide to Traore. It's a little one-two. I'm going to have to bring Device across here. Oh, I've committed. Space for Vasilev. Joshua Emmanuel. What a block. And a goal kick for us too. Well, that's slightly lucky. Aston Villa playing really well in this game. We've not necessarily been bad either. They're just better than us. If we can somehow, somehow squeeze a point out of this game, I'll be so happy. So happy. Wilkes. Scott is there. And he's found well. Is that foul? It is. Free kick in a good position here for Leonardo Pinto. Came very close with a free kick recently against Millwall in a simulated game that we took control of briefly for a free kick. Ah, but it's too near to the goalkeeper. Oh. Got to be better. Need like a James Wall Prowse style free kick master. But hopefully we can kind of transfer, transform one of our already present players into a free kick master rather than having to sign someone purely for that role. Because I don't want to shoehorn someone into my starting lineup just because they can take free kicks. Because you don't get many of them. Not this year. Try all right to Gilbert. Into Mitsuya, Ollie Watkins. He's deadly. Thank you, Reese Burke. I can't get there, though. Mitsuya turns. And Traore to Vice in the way. We're having to defend so hard here. Jack Greenish to deliver the corner. There's so many available in the middle for him to find. They've already scored one corner. And Courtney Howes nearly had a second. I wasn't far away at all. Came flying in from the edge of the box. And, well, George Long thought about just standing and looking at it. I think that was... More a dive out of, or dive for appearances than anything else. He wasn't getting anywhere near that if it had been sneaking in that corner. Keep going, please, Doherty. It's a good run. It's a good ball from Scott. Pinto is there. I'll look for Scott. No, it's meant for Scott, not Pinto. <sighs> 20 minutes to go. 2-1 still. 
Burke tackles the man in the middle there. Oh, that's a very important foot in from the Aston Villa midfield. Oh, we've outmuscled them there. Changes being made here by me at least. And by them too, it seems. Bar and Barnett coming on for me. Maybe they'll make the difference. Just maybe. Lewis Potter looks for Charlie Barnett. Driving around the outside, the defender. And getting the goal! We have strikers at the club that want that striking role. They just don't do it regularly enough. Oh, dearie me. Both Barnett and Scott on the scoreline against the league leaders. Unbelievable scenes at the KCOM. Diving into the challenge, just got the legs to get away from it. And a decent left-footed finish too. He is my joint top goal scorer this season, Charles Barnett, with five in the championship. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I think at the very least, we have to sell McGuinness now because Scott clearly has to be the man that we call on either off the bench or as a backup striker if we keep with just the two of them. Oh, do I give do I give them the rest of this season to try and prove themselves? I genuinely just don't know. So torn. So torn. Scott, a Hull City in real life youngster. Barnett, a player we found in this save. <gasps> Could we win? Keen Lewis Potter. Keen Lewis Potter. We might win. We might beat Aston Villa. Even bigger scenes and limbs at the KCOM. Unbelievable. Villa pushing bodies forward, trying to get themselves back in front, and they've been caught. Two quick fire goals from Hull City. The home fans into Raptors. Five minutes to go. Have we just won against Aston Villa? That would be back to back wins for us. This could be, rather remarkably, the start of the run that I've been asking for, that I've been waiting for for so long. Unbelievable! I can't, I can't quite fathom what's happened. Here come Villa, Watkins to Midsure to Grealish. They've still been the best team in this game, Aston Villa. Elvedi, they're going to have to get the ball forward. I tried to lunge in there and get there and couldn't. Vasilev has the option on the far side in Matty Cash. Here's Ollie Watkins. Matty Cash still there. Don't dive in. Be patient in your defending. Yes, Reese Burke. That might win us the game. That tackle. Oh, I'm giving it away again, though. Yes! A win! A win against Aston Villa of all teams. Middlesbrough and Villa. I was going to say brushed aside, but certainly not. And that one extra shot on target with 32% possession. How have we pulled that off? Oh, new striker, yes or no? I don't know, but we're winning games. We're winning games. It's happening, lads. That run is happening. Don't blame yourself, Charlie. Probably could have contributed more. You scored. You scored and gave us an equaliser and then helped kickstart a winner. Oh, Sheffield Wednesday next. Where are they in the table? I've no idea. We are... We're four points off the playoffs. Oh, but Sheffield Wednesday is still fighting in those first... That was Villa's first defeat of the season! They're still going to win the league, but... Wow! Will they? Will that... Will this defeat spark a decline from them now? Fleetwood still with just two points and no wins in 18 games. Someone mentioned in the comments section... Uh, perhaps that they don't have any goalkeepers. Couldn't be further from the truth. They have four goalkeepers, all of which have played games this season, and none of them can keep clean sheets. They're just genuinely that bad, Fleetwood. They're genuinely that bad. Deary me. Join me against Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday's ta uh, time side. Josh Windass up top. Son of Dean Windass, Hull City legend. Jordan Rhodes alongside him. Dangerous front line, to be fair. Another five at the back formation. We've been different performances against five at the backs this year. We either play really well or we get battered. So which of those two options is this going to be? Elder. Into Scott. Pinto. Arriving at pace is young Wallace. Pinto out wide. Wilkes. Wallace. 
Scott. Oh, shot blocked. It's going to fall for Wallace. His shot's blocked as well. Win that header, please. Well up, Lewis Potter. Unfortunately, nobody able to get towards it. Well, two opening chances for us. But on both occasions, they've got enough men back there, unsurprisingly, in a five-back, to get defenders in the way. Adam Reach. Reach over the top. Lovely ball to Palmer. Pushing forward at right wing back. Corner. For Wednesday. Well worked. Bruns to deliver. Uh, there it is. Oh, that's actually pretty decent. And Josh Windass, born in Hull, but never actually played for Hull. With the header that was well saved by George Long. Is Josh Windass a player we sign? I don't know if he's going to be good enough, to be fair. But uh, if it were FM, perhaps I'd consider signing Josh Windass at Hull. But on FIFA, he's definitely not going to progress at the rate we need to contribute in the Premier League. It's a shame because it would be such a great storyline if we brought uh, Josh Windass to Hull City. Maybe we should have done that in Season 1. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's a nice super one. Thankfully, Wilkes is back there on the cover because he had the acceleration to get to that ahead of the attacker. Under pressure against this Wednesday side now. They're in the playoffs for a reason. But we are on the back of beating the previously unbeaten league leaders. Oh, he's squeezed past me somehow there. So we're high on confidence here after that 3-2 win at home. Hopefully we can force a victory here against Wednesday too. Palmer lofted in and away by Manuel. Rhodes, nice footwork and a strike. Well saved by Long. Hold out to Elder and down the line. That's a nice ball. Lewis Potter, the only real option inside is Scott, but Pinto and Doherty are arriving. Scott could go again. Where do we go? Where do we go? Make me a decent run, please, James. He has done, actually. And the first touch is decent, and the shot's blocked, and it'll be a corner. Block shots only, it seems, for us so far in this game. Pinto to deliver that. It could be Scott underneath this. That's a header from Borna. And we'll try again. Maybe a little bit closer towards the near post. And Dunkley in the way this time. Except for Wednesday. Very good at getting in the way of all of my chances. Lewis Potter with a header that was on target and skewing away towards that far side. But Will Smith, comfortably enough, making the stop. Burke forward. Pinto around the corner to Wallace. Looking for James Scott. Wilkes making a good run, but it's opened up some space here for Wallace, who's in the box. Back to Scott. Good footwork. Oh, shot on target. Needed to burst past the defender to work the space for the shot and did that well. Could be underneath this. Dunkley again. Falls to Doherty. Oh, he sat up nicely, but closed down. Win that. Knock it back. Keep it in play. Look for Scott. Oh, that's not the best of passes to him. Keen Lewis. Potter! Whoa! That was on its way towards the top corner and it needed saving by the keeper. We can see a replay. That's not the best of angles for it, unfortunately. That was... Destined to be a worldy first goal! Oh, Jordi Device heads over the bar. I thought that was in Courtney Howe's style. Palmer down to Delhi Bashiru. Nice tackle by Burke. And now they've committed some bodies forward. If we can get them on the counter, this could be the chance to take the lead. Cross to Doherty. Wilkes is arriving. I'll lift it. Oh, and it's taken a kind deflection. Please tell me he was onside. He was, Willie! Mallet Wilkes makes it 1 0 at Hillsborough. And in a, yet another Yorkshire derby here at championship level, we lead on this occasion. It took a, oh, just borderline offside. And it took a deflection that actually probably helped it fall more kindly into Wilkes' path. I tried to shape for his left foot, but he's, he's taken it. He, oh, he, you see him, he went to take that touch with his left foot and then it broke into the, uh, the shooting animation. So it, it registered my input. It just unfortunately didn't... Act get the chance to go through with it. He does have a five-star weak foot, though, as you can see there. And evidently, that five-star weak foot's pretty good. He's got 83 finishing with the morale boosts. I didn't realise his finishing was quite that good. Maybe, dare I say it, with his ability to play at striker, maybe Mallet Wilkes is the player we should be playing up top and give more of a chance to Bar or... Um, I can't remember his name. There's another winger... Left mid, what? Not Wallace. Wallace is in the top. The other guy. Sorry, I forgot your name. Uh, maybe we should give Wilkes the starting spot at striker, transform him to striker, and then give the other young players the chance to perform out wide. There are so many options open to us, and that one's not one that I'd even possibly considered 
yet to this point. It hadn't even occurred to me that I could maybe play Malik Wilkes at striker. That might even be the best option. He's already high enough rated. And with the stats to genuinely be very, very good in that role, given the opportunity. Can Pinto work us a second here? No. And again, Sheffield Wednesday defenders in the way. I'm going to try that. I'm going to take Scott off, bring Barr on, and I'm going to put Malik Wilkes up top. Maybe we change Malik Wilkes to striker. That could be the answer. That could even be the, the decision that gives us the chance to go up this season by putting someone that has that ability in front of goal in the main goal scoring position. Jesus Christ, I've no idea what to do. Oh, all I know is that George Long is going to continue to be my number one goalkeeper for a very long time. But unfortunately, we have still conceded here. Jordan Rhodes with a brilliant header down hard low into the ground as long as he's trying to scramble across his goal mouth. He's on his own there. Just gets his feet set, but it's right in the corner. It's a brilliant header by Rhodes. You'll see here, it's not at the keeper. He's actually down low and away to his left. He's tried to stretch for it and actually just not been able to get down to ground quickly enough. Rhodes makes it 1-1, but now with Wilkes at striker, is that going to change this game? Reach over the top, looking for Penny from left back. Lofted into the middle and away. No, not away. How the defender hasn't won that ball, that aerial encounter, I'm not sure, unless he's just got the run on both of them. And that is another wonderful stop by George Long. Reach to deliver the ball into the middle. Keeper thought about coming for it. Didn't, perhaps should have done. Borner makes it 2-1 Sheffield Wednesday. We don't have any aerial threat, apparently. 2-1 down. Elder. Into the middle to Pinto. Oh, I can't believe it. I made the decision to make a, a change at striker and we've ended up conceding a goal. But oh, doesn't get it out of his feet quickly enough. Can we win that header? We can't. Here's Penny. That's a nice ball in behind. Yordi Device is probably not going to catch Jordan Rhodes here. Thankfully he has because Rhodes has gone sideways and not shown proper intent to get towards goal. Delhi Bashiru gets past me. Oh, big save again from George Long to deny Josh Windass. It's not written in the stars for Windass to score a goal against his dad's former team, but it might be written in the stars for Malik Wilkes to get an assist. Oh God, Wallace is running out of time and space, but he's gonna score anyway. Yeah, we're gonna get a point at Hillsborough. I thought we just didn't have the legs with him to get all the way to the goal close enough to have the shot. He's done it. And how important are these saves from George Long? Three in this game that have certainly denied Sheffield Wednesday a massive win here. Wallace wasn't even the best of shots. It's just the shot power's gone straight past the goalkeeper. Oh, this whole episode has just been... This whole season has just been non-stop, exhausting entertainment. 2-2 two, two against Sheffield Wednesday. Not Josh Windass now, please, surely. Bruns. Back to Rhodes. He's going for a world. He... George Long. Cracking save again. Good angle for it. That was destined for the top corner, I think. It certainly was. Oh, my God. Just non-stop. Oh, no, that wasn't the best. And it is Windass that's underneath it. It's Windass that wins the header. Long again! He's certainly going to be the cover star for this episode. George Long. I don't think I've ever had a goalkeeping performance quite like this in a single game from anyone. Ref, please. Sheffield Wednesday could have won that 7-2. But George Long is apparently the best goalkeeper of all time. And... It won't give him man the match because it doesn't give goalkeepers man the match very regularly at all. Rob Wallace gets an 8.3. But George Long with a 7.3 and 8 saves, as far as I'm concerned, absolutely deserved a man of the match there, even despite conceding two goals. Unbelievable game of football to round out today's episode. If you haven't dropped the video a like by now, I certainly think you should. Oh my lord. Undefeated today as well. Two wins and two draws. Eight points from a possible 
12. That's not a bad haul at all, especially considering we were playing Sheffield Wednesday and Aston Villa in today's episode. They've lost another one. They have won another one, though, but they have lost another. Is this the opportunity for them just below there to close the gap? Norwich, Sheffield United leads. Maybe. Probably not, but maybe. We're 13th. We are five points off the playoffs. Five points off the playoffs and 10 points above the relegation zone. We might well consider ourselves not threatened by relegation now after a good episode today. That's what we needed. It was just a good run of results. Let's keep it going, starting with Rotherham tomorrow, then Bournemouth, which will be a tough game at home, and Coventry after that. And then we've got Sheffield United and Norwich tomorrow, the day after that as well. <gasps> oh, big games, big games coming up over the next few episodes. Big decisions to be made with regards how the squad lines up. Maybe I give Malik Wilkes the start at striker. Just don't know. I'll continue on with Scott and Barnett until January. Because they're gonna be better Wilkes is gonna be they're gonna be better up top than Bar or what was his name? Andrew will be out wide with Wilkes playing in either the striker or the wide position. Pinto is 79 rated now. Surely it's not going to be long before we start getting bids for him. We might well lose Leonardo Pinto soon. It might be a Dominic Brown from the Cambridge United RTG scenario uh, in this save where we lose Pinto to buy him back when we're good enough. Because certainly he's going to be one of, if not the highest rated player in the championship right now. Maybe one of with some of Aston Villa's players, perhaps well, Jack Grealish being higher rated specifically springs to mind. Deary me. Oh, and it continues tomorrow. Again, join me then, guys. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.